Last summer, I got to be part of the Durian Symposium in Chantaburi, Thailand with the International Society of Horticultural Scientists, and I got to present a paper I wrote on that survey all of you helped me with last winter. Some of you have been asking about the Promise Vlog, in which I ask your questions to real durian scientists, so here it is now. There was an exhibition with durians from many countries and a local durian contest with Dr. Songpal as judge. The main area was a big room with lots of chairs. It looked really fancy. Also, I knew almost everyone had PhDs or master's degrees, and there weren't very many women, so I felt sort of intimidated. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to raise that. But then I met some friends, so I felt better. They gave us water and distracting handouts, and then I forgot to turn off my camera for a while. International Symposium on Durian and Other there were about 40 presentations on genetic diversity and breeding and new technologies for shipping durian and lots of others that were just too technical for me to understand. But then there were durian snacks and I got to meet up with some friends from Australia. How's it going? Yeah, great. Brilliant. Yeah. It's going to get better with the durian tasting now. There was an official durian tasting that disappointed some people. I think the tree is best oh. because I test the original one, okay. not this one. What's wrong with this one? It is a frozen. It's frozen? From frozen. Why? Not, is it not the original? Oh. But then they turned us loose on the durians from the contest, so everybody was happy. I get some of that. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Which one are you on? But I like Jun too. Oh, okay. Yesterday. You did? Oh, okay. Yeah. The Chanterbury too. Actually, no, it was two or three. I think, I it, was, think, I think it, it was three. Yeah, I think it was three, three. too. Yeah. Mm. Then it was my turn to get up on stage, and that was terrifying because stage fright. Then it was time for dinner and dancing and navigating the vegetarian issue. Uh, do you candy and fish and fish sauce? No. No fish sauce. in mozzarella. Then I cornered Peter and asked him the first reader question. So Richard wants to know if your contact is at DPI and how far apart you plant your trees for the touch for trails. Yeah, the main contact we have at DPI is about the trails. And uh, the current jury thing we have uh, three metres apart in the row, so there's a tree every 1.5 metres because of the double row in the open material. But the new planting we're going to do, we're going to go to four metres apart. Because durian trees are really hard to get and they're expensive. And we really believe two metres either side is a short range still anyway. So we're going to four metres. But the bearing, the crud and tong we had the fruit on, that I talked about, is three metres apart and it had to bowl of fruit. The next day we went to a durian packing shed where they were readying fresh durians to send to China and then to a farm for a photo op. Um, yeah, that's nice. My, my, my. There I cornered some more scientists to ask your questions. So I'm with Dr. Songpol and Dr. Drew who are in charge of this uh, symposium and uh, I'm going to ask them a couple of reader questions. So Elise wants to know what are the prospects of growing durian in Central and South America? Uh, for me, uh, yes. Maybe possible to grow a million in uh, Central America and South America. I would add as long as it's a humid tropical area with good soil and good rainfall. Yes, okay. But they like the humid tropics. Okay, see. So and have a good land. Right. And uh, good rain. Good, good rain. Land, yeah. Do you think people will like it in Central and South America? <laughs> I couldn't predict that. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then Pierre wants to know uh, most durian production is done with the help of chemical fertilizers and all sorts of pesticides. To what extent are these found in the fruits we eat and how this hazard is considered or not by the scientific community? Well, most chemicals, pesticides have withholding periods. Right. So it depends. And some chemical insecticides are systemic. They go into the plant and some just stay on the surface. So it would depend what is sprayed, uh, what the withholding period is, uh, and how long after they're sprayed are they marketed. Okay. Generally, if, if people follow the directions and, and harvest them 
at the recommended time mm -hmm. come to spray, it's mm -hmm. not a problem. But it's okay. a difficult question to answer. Yeah, <laughs> so many different ones. Yeah, yeah. For Thailand, uh, we follow the good agricultural practice, mm. especially uh, to use a chemical such as a pesticide and fungicide uh, should be. Uh, at least one month before the harvesting. Darda, where are you from? Indonesia. 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 Yeah. And you presented a paper on tissue culture in Durian? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think that uh, tissue culture is a viable option for places like Australia where they have such strict quarantine laws? Uh, maybe for the long time, yeah, this could be, but uh, it needs a long time to, to because uh, uh, the problem of the quarantine is on the fruits, but the tissue culture is still working on the very early steps in the, the propagation of the uh, okay. durian. Okay, so what needs to happen to make it an option for people who want to take durian to their country and grow it? Uh, it's a tough question, but uh, for the propagation, we, we can send the, the very small plantlets or young somatic embryo. Uh -huh if other countries need it but uh, of course uh, that uh, depends also to the material agreement or transfer agreement okay. the, the right. material. And, and someone told me that it might not work because they never grow a taproot is that right uh, yeah that's uh, actually the tissue culture of durian not just for the propagation but also for uh, breeding by, by technology based breeding so we can improve uh, the uh, some character of durian mm. by the for example uh, mutation breeding or uh, irradiation breeding in the tissue cultures and also of course for the uh, propagation okay but, uh, uh, the tap group is uh, it's uh, not really problem but because we can also uh, have the grafting the tissue culture durian to the, the seedling of oh. the regular durian. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So you think it's a good option for, yeah. for propagating? Yeah. Okay. Because it's also if we have uh, uh, what we call is micro grafting to uh, the really uh, durian seedling that uh, will increase the speed of the growth. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Yeah, You're appreciate welcome. it. <laughs> and then it was over and it was time to get back on the bus. So thanks for watching to the end of this video. You must really love durian. I filmed this video last summer, but I wanted to share it because I think it's easy to forget just how many people and different fields of study come together in understanding one fruit. I'll put some links to more sciencey durian articles in the description box below and please feel free to ask me any comments or questions you have about durian. If you would like to participate in a new survey about durian loving, you'll also find the link in the description box below. Thanks!